Oh, people, here we are. I am going to commit to getting back into our super fun intentional practice. And for those of you that are new here and don't know what my intentional practice sessions are all about, I'm going to take a couple of minutes, give you a quickie little rundown because it's one of the habits that I developed really early on in our business and it changed the game for me from a design perspective. So I refer to it as intentional practice and it is literally as described. <laughs> practice with a very clear intention. It's very normal for us as floral designers to kind of see all of our peers on Instagram and go, well, they must have just come out of the womb assuming that they could be that good, right? That there are people who are just naturally gifted at design and I must not be one of those people. But my friends, the process of intentional practice is precisely how you learn. It's very simple. You're going to allocate, set aside a time where you only define for yourself one intention for your practice, right? And because there are so many things to learn from a floral design perspective, you can set your intention to be anything. You can set your intention to learn a mechanic or a specific type of design style. You can sit there and actually map out for yourself and play with flowers to figure out how many stems you need in a new container that you might be thinking about purchasing. You could be practicing your photography. You could be practicing editing and using presets. You could be practicing and mapping out pricing. You could be defining for yourself in terms of the types of ingredients, the number of ingredients that you want to be using in a specific design, right? Literally like the spectrum of what you could be practicing and what you could be setting an intention for, like hundreds of different things. It's super helpful if with your practice session, you literally just set one intention. And I can guarantee you, right? What I'm going to make today isn't going to be my best work. But that, my friends, is not the point. The point is I really want to get you and encourage you to get into the habit of practicing for yourself. One of the things that's really helpful to know when you are running a flower business is that you get to define your own design aesthetic. The fastest way to identify your design aesthetic is to set aside time for intentional practice. And you can use other designers' photos as inspiration. You can pick up a photo and an inspiration image that you might find on Instagram or Pinterest. Take some time to dissect it, identify the ingredients, the pairings that they've used, create your own recipe, and then literally source those ingredients and make it for yourself and decide if you want to take a slightly different take on it in terms of ingredients, color pairings, like everything. This practice of setting an attention and learning something from it, so helpful. It's so helpful to know that it's taken years and hundreds of thousands of hours of hands-on floral design practice to understand and identify what my design aesthetic is, right? To finally feel like I've understood how to take photos of my work. So I'm here to commit to you that I'm going to show up every week and teach you something, obviously, it's true, that's a given, but also share with you my own intentional practice, right? And remember, the point of the intentional practice is to not necessarily love every single thing that you create. The point of your intentional practice is to set an intention, enjoy the process of learning something, and know that you get to carry that learning with you all the way through your design and all the way through the development of your business. So let us get into it. Before I forget, I'm going to let you know that there is a super handy free PDF that you can download, which is my intentional practice guide, because it's going to be very, very simple because I want you to commit to doing this, right? So I give you a quick little rundown on the front in terms of things you could set your intention with, but the whole point is I want you to set one intention, right? One intention, one practice. And then I want you to set yourself up so that you enjoy this experience. Groovy music, cup of tea, light a candle, whatever your vibe is, go for it. And 
then you're going to create what you're going to create. And then you're going to reflect upon what you created. You're going to identify the three things that you loved about what you designed and the three things you would do differently next time. And then you can carry that learning with you through to the rest of time. I am going to outline in the show notes for you. I will give you the exact recipe of what I end up designing. I'll give you the pricing based on the recipe and what I end up designing. And I want you to think about for yourself what you might change, right? One of the most amazing things about being a floral designer is that your design aesthetic and my design preferences are going to be different. I encourage you to make them different. I encourage you to think about the ingredients that you would either leave out or the ingredients that you would like to incorporate based on your design preferences. So I want you to even learn more from this tutorial and from this training than I'm even just going to give you because I want to give you full permission to decide for yourself what aspects of this design you like and what aspects of this design that you would like to change for yourself. Enough jibber jabber, let us get into the good stuff. So for today's intentional practice, I'm going to show you, talk you through a quick rundown in terms of how I actually, from a functional point of view, make our bridal bouquets. So I'm going to show you one of my favorite mechanics, just to give you a bit of an opportunity to understand that there's lots of different ways to do these things. And as I said before, I am going to give you the rundown in terms of all the ingredients I use. But remember, you can decide if you want to use that same list of ingredients or you can adjust, tweak, change it for yourself. I do have a few dried ingredients here. So I have some, um, we refer to this in Australia as Misty, right? This is beautiful, delicate. I know it's referred to as other names in other parts of the world. I really hope that this focuses. It may not, which is fine. We'll see if this focuses. Yeah, oh well. Always learning, right, people? In Australia, we refer to this as zigzag wattle. Super cute, amazing. It's one of my favorite for buttonholes, for boutonnieres and corsages. I do have some dried baby's breath. And then I have, because it's blossom season here in Australia, hello, friend. A little bit of blossom. I also have some wild freesians. And then I have some anemones which have definitely seen better days right you can see they're brown around the edges but I highly recommend and I encourage you to use up old ingredients right nobody's paying for this design so this whole exercise is about learning something a few bits of white sweet pea and then got a couple of stems Queen Anne's Lace. A few stems of white Alstroemeria. This is the Vandala Rose. So it's probably one of my favorites. It's probably the, one of the most like sturdy. It's very rarely gonna turn brown and bruise no matter how much you kind of manipulate it. So super helpful if you're looking for a creamy wedding rose. And then I do have a handful of white carnations. Y'all know how much I love my carnations. So one of the things to recognize in floral design is that there's kind of only like six ways, I should say, or six different mechanics that you'll ever learn. And then it's up to you to decide how you want to combine it together. So I just want to share this with you because it's how I am able to make a lot of the like deconstructed bouquets that we make, but I was never able to master it in any sort of like free form style. So this might blow your mind or you might decide it's not for you, which is totally fine. So I have a little bit of the thin pot tape. Think in Australia, this is 12 mils. I have no idea how many inches that is. <laughs> You can figure that out yourself. The first thing I am going to do is I'm going to take a few stems of Queen Anne's Lace and I'm going to create for myself like a base armature, right? A base mechanic that my, the rest of my flowers will actually sit in. So I will trim the stems off just to make sure I keep everything on camera for you guys. But this is where it gets a little bit weird and wonderful. So I'm randomly crossing my stems and I'm actually going to tape 
them together. So it's super weird, but you can kind of hopefully see taped together. And what I'm doing when I do this is creating like a nest that I can then weave the stems through. And you can do this with spray roses, hydrangea, sedum, it's one of my favorites. The chocolate Queen Anne's Lace is, tends to be a bit sturdier than this particular variety I have, um, which is probably one of my, my most favorites. And this is where I'm gonna start to kind of add in a mite, just cause I want to truly see what the end result is. I'm gonna add in a layer of Alstroemeria, which we may or may not see at the end of our design. To be honest, I've never used Elstro in a bouquet design before, but I feel like such an amazing thing to understand if I like the texture that it provides. And you get to decide for yourself if you like the texture it provides. So it's very possible that you're looking at this and you're seeing a little bit of a hot mess, which is kind of the intention because I do want, it's very, it's a little bit messy. It's very un non-traditional from a floral design perspective, right? This looks like a five-year-old made it, but trust me, it's going to come together. I hope. Now I'm going to go through and I am going to, I will speed up everything just so I'm not completely wasting your time, but I'm going to go through, do my placements, and then we'll come back and reflect at the end.
So this is where I have netted out. And it's far from perfect, but always something to be learned, right? And a really kind of fresh take on white and green. I'm going to pass along the three things that I learned, three things that I love about this particular bouquet, but I also want you to think for yourself what you actually like about it or what you don't like about it, totally fine, right? I want you to do this and have your own take on it. So the three things that I'm absolutely loving is just the abundance of product, right? This is very much me. This is very much why our bridal bouquets are priced at $320 because I want a lot of product. So this is probably pretty close. There might even be more ingredients that we would use if this was for a paying client, for a bride or for a couple getting married. So it's pretty close to to my particular like abundance level. The second thing that I'm loving is using the Alstro and the Blossom as like placeholders for foliage. So one of the things that I particularly love about the type of design that I do, right, and one of the very intentional decisions that we have made is we're not using a lot of foliage, but we use texture to help create contrast with our focal flowers. So in this instance, the actual foliage that's on the Alstro, the foliage that's on the rose, and the blossom itself are our textures or our foliage. And the third thing I love is like, this is a very different take on fresh white and green, right? It's like a mass of roses on one side and then it's like a spring party over here because you've got like the scent of the freesias and the texture of the sweet pea and like all of the amazing goodness that's happening. So. Three things I loved. Three things I would probably change for next time is this particular variety of Queen Anne's lace, like where the heads are really big and the stems are a little bit floppy. Not an amazing mechanic to use at the base of this bouquet. I ended up including some Alstro in that base mechanic, kind of that base armature, because the Queen Anne's lace is a little bit floppy. So we can all learn from that experience. The other thing which I have a tendency to do is like where my hand is, it's going to feel a little bit naked. So I want to just make a note for myself to make sure I allow for enough ingredients to keep like keep coming down here, right? And just fill this. Some people might refer to it as like the collar, but just fill this section in so that it doesn't feel too stemmy. <laughs> and the third thing that I might adjust for next time is potentially play with having a little bit of blossom on this side as well. And just to help break up some of this rose extravaganza. But hey, you know what? You can never go wrong with too many roses. So feel free to take your own interpretation of this, right? Feel free to have your own reflection upon what you liked about this design so that you can even learn other things from this whole experience. You get to decide for yourself what kind of design you want to be creating. You get to decide whether you like this combination of ingredients, whether you want to plan for this combination of ingredients, or whether you're like, no way, Jose. <laughs> totally fine, right? So as I said, I'm definitely going to leave for you in the show notes below the stem counts of everything that I use, the recipe, and I'm going to price it out for you just so that you have a guide. And don't forget to go out there, do your own intentional practice. Click the link below so you can grab my intentional practice worksheet. Definitely keep a note either running like Google Doc or set up your own journal so that you can just keep making a note and know that the next time you're asked to do like a white and green design, you can either come back here, find this recipe and start from there or do your own take on it in an intentional practice session and start from there. So friends, highly recommend so you embrace the power of setting up a weekly intentional practice session. Learn something, set one intention, learn one thing. You'll feel so grateful that you have done this work. If you know anybody who could benefit from watching this tutorial, definitely be sure to share this video with them. Leave a comment below if you want me to do anything particular on an intentional practice session. And friends, have a beautiful week and I'll talk to you next time. Bye for now.